What's up, guys? This is Manoj Papani, your friend. I welcome you all on behalf of the Edupedia world. So, how are you guys? I just hope that you guys are enjoying your life to the fullest. Bang on! <laughs> I just hope that kind of demeanor that you are having, that kind of enthusiasm, that kind of uh, excitement that you are having in your life, you just keep it going on like this. Perfect. Are you guys revising your topics time and again? I hope so. Please do it. If not for yourself, at least for me, I'll be really a weight to you in that case. Because the next time you think about becoming a chartered accountant, please keep in your mind my voice. Keep the way that's actually I like the way I'm begging you up in order to make you understand that revision is the key to sail in the CA final examination. So. I just hope that you guys are revising your topic, and that's just not the case with merely auditing. That's the same thing which is happening to law, ISCA, or uh, strategy financial management, my another subject. So all the subjects which have been like included in the course curriculum of chartered accountancy, each and every course demands revision and retention. So you need to ensure that you guys are revising your topics time and again. Perfect. So we were discussing about SA 250 in my last presentation, wherein I discussed with you about the consideration of laws and regulations in an audit of financial statements. That was part one, and in this presentation, I'll be discussing with you with the remaining topics of this particular essay. That's a part two and the last part of this presentation. So are we guys all set? Perfect. Fasten up your seat belts. We are about to take off. The topic for the day. First of all, audit procedures when non-compliance is identified or suspected. So, guys, you being the auditor, you went for some audit and you got to know that non-compliance with regarding some of the laws and regulations have been done by that company, and you identified the same. Or, if in case you are suspecting that something has happened, so what all should be your steps? What all should be your audit procedures that you need to undertake in that case? Whenever you find out some kind of instances of non-compliance, either identified or suspected, as the case may be. So, what are those? So, guys, first of all, if you as auditor you become aware of the information which is concerning of an instance of non-compliance or suspected non-compliance with laws and regulations, then in that case, you as auditor. You shall obtain a particular understanding of the nature of the act and the circumstances in which it has already occurred. So, you need to understand the kind of nature of that non-compliance. Okay, the company was not able to file its return on time, or the company was not able to deposit the chalan on time, or if the company has like forgotten to adjust some of the dues. So, you need to understand the nature of the act and the circumstances. In which circumstances has the company been like not able to fulfill the non-compliance? Uh, so wherein the non-compliance has occurred? So you need to understand those circumstances first of all. And the next thing, further information to evaluate the possible effect on the financial statements should be uh, scrutinized. In that case, you need to have the fair information. Okay, if the company hasn't uh, deposited the chalan on time, so what's the implication that it's going to happen on the financial statements in that case? So you need to gauge out. For this thing as well, wherein you'll get to know about the further information, you need to evaluate the possible effect of that mishap on the financial statements. The next thing that needs to be done from your end is, if as an auditor you suspect, though it hasn't been identified, but you suspect that there may be a non-compliance, then in that case, you as auditor need to discuss the matter with the management and those charged with governance. So. You need to understand that communication and coordination is extremely important. So you need to discuss these matters with management and those charged with governance people team. The next thing, if in case uh, the management and those charged with governance do not provide sufficient information, then the auditor, that is you, you shall consider the need to obtain the legal advice. So that could be your team, as your internal audit or statutory audit team from your office. Your company, or if in case the same thing is being required, you can still take up the services of some other legal advisor as well. So 
that's another thing that you need to do as an audit procedure and if in case the some certain kind of sufficient information about suspected non compliance cannot be obtained that information is just not being able to provide you some kind of relevant or requisite evidence then in that case you as auditor shall evaluate the effect of the lack of sufficient appropriate audit evidence on the auditor's opinion does this particular lack of evidence evidence is going to hamper your opinion on financial statements in some or the other way you need to obtain that kind of evidence as well so you need to evaluate the effect of lack of sufficient and appropriate audit evidence on your opinion if in case sufficient information about suspected non compliance cannot be obtained so these are your audit procedures which needs to be done from your end when non compliance is identified or suspected obtain the understanding of the nature of the act and evaluate the possible effect on the fs next discuss the matter with management or those charged with governance if in case that matter this matter is been sorted by the management in those charged with governance then consider taking up some kind of legal advice if they don't provide you the sufficient information and lastly evaluate the effect of lack of sufficient and appropriate audit evidence on the auditor's opinion if in case sufficient information about suspected non compliance cannot be obtained perfect guys let's move to our next thing reporting finally so once the audit is being done you need to report a report about the identified or suspected non compliance so what all needs to be done first of all reporting non compliance to those charged with governance obviously you need to do it so unless all of those charged with governance are involved in the management of the entity then in that case you as auditor need to communicate with those charged with governance all the matters which are involving about that non compliance with the laws and regulations that comes to your attention as auditor secondly if in case you believe as an auditor that the non compliance is believed to be intentional and material then in that case the auditor shall communicate the matter to those charged with governance as soon as practicable do it if in case the matters are like having direct impact direct and a bigger kind of impact on the financial statements and you know that it needs to be communicated as soon as possible then do it first of all and if in case you as an auditor suspect that management and those charged with governance team are actually involved in that non compliance then in that case you as auditor shall communicate the matter to next level higher authority at the entity if it exists if in case that doesn't exist then in that case you need to have that information provided to the audit committee or supervisory board and if in case both these things are actually not existing in case then the auditor believes that the communication may not be acted upon then in that case you need to consider the need to obtain the legal advice if in case no higher authority exists so guys that's the first thing which needs to be done as far as reporting non compliance to those charged with governance team is concerned communicate with them if in case the next level higher authority is available so do communicate with them as well if you suspect that management and tcwg are involved in that non compliance and if in case there is no other next level higher authority then in that case consider the need to obtain the legal advice lawyers will be the best person in that case to help you out with that kind of situation so that's one thing the next thing comes in as the reporting of the non compliance in the auditor's report on the financial statements so one is reporting non compliance to tcwg what if uh something as relating the same has already happened okay you have completed that now the next thing comes into the picture in as your reporting on the non compliance in your report on the financial statements so if the auditor concludes that non compliance has a very good kind of material effect on the financial statements and the same hasn't been adequately reflected on the financial statements the auditor shall express a qualified or adverse opinion on the financial statements you are aware of the fact that this non compliance is having a greater kind of material effect on the financial statements and the same 
hasn't been adequately reflected in your financial statements then in that case you need to express a qualified or adverse opinion on the financial statements you cannot just you just cannot afford to provide them the clean report in that case and if in case let's suppose there might be a case wherein you just went to the management and they are not providing you the relevant and requisite kind of documentation they are not providing you your working papers they are not providing you the requisite details with which uh, you can form documentation then they are providing some kind of disclaimer to you obviously they are so in that case the auditor is precluded by the management or those charged with government extreme from obtaining sufficient and appropriate audit evidence then in that case the auditor shall express a qualified or disclaimer opinion third if the auditor is unable to determine us auditor are just not able to determine whether non compliance has occurred because of some kind of limitations which are being like imposed by some circumstances rather than the management or tcwg team then in that case the auditor shall evaluate its effect on auditor's opinion so what's going to happen in that case you need to evaluate that and after the evaluation of the same you need to report that non compliance in the auditor's report on financial statements as the case may be and the lastly the major thing the reporting of non compliance to regulatory and enforcement authorities there might be a case wherein you have been appointed by sebi rbi i icra or such big authorities so in that case if you have identified or suspect some kind of non compliance with laws and regulations which are going on in the company then you as auditor shall determine whether you are having some kind of responsibility to report the identified and suspected non compliance to some parties outside the entity or not that is the enforcement and the regulatory authorities and if in case that needs to be done then you need to report to these authorities as well so guys that was all about your reporting of identified and suspected non compliance the reporting of non compliance with tcwg reporting non compliance in the auditor's report on fs and reporting non compliance to a regulatory and authority in fact enforcement authorities as the case may be it is required perfect guys you have the complete understanding of the reporting standards as well yep perfect so now let's move to one question which was asked in ce final examination i'm sure that uh, it's extremely important to make you aware of the fact that you need to know what all kind of questions usually come into examination as far as auditing is concerned my purpose will remain unfulfilled if in case you, you just got the entire amount of concepts and you just not got the questions which have been like asked in ce final examination so my prerogative will remain irrelevant in that case so you need to know what kind of questions are usually uh, usually comes in your examination uh, as far as ce final is concerned so this was the question which was asked in ce final examination for may 2010 so we need to provide them the indicators as an auditor what are the indicators you would consider while verifying the compliance with laws and regulations first of all investigation by regulatory organizations you went in for some kind of audit and you got to know that even rbi has deployed some of the auditors over there what's going to happen in your mind first of all your mind is going to get a click okay why rbi has appointed its own auditors in this company so it's going to make you aware of some of the irregular irregularities which are going on in the company so that's going to get highlighted in your mind you need to catch that so first of all investigation by regulatory organization government departments or payment of fines uh, additional taxes penalties are going on so that is one thing second payment of some unspecified services you got to see that uh, there have been some kind of payment for some unspecified services being made loan to consultants related to parties employees government employees so all these things basically uh, question your mind as to why the same have been like paid uh, in terms of these unspecified services so that's another indicator for you you need to address that next will come in as sales commission and agents fees which are being paid in relation to some kind of ordinary services which are being paid by the entity or its industry or to services which are actually received so 
sales commission or agent fees are paid in uh, excessive amounts extremely excessive amounts you got to know that while selling a product a person gets a commission of like let's say 50 rupees and the next time you just got to see the accounts and you got to know that that person is now days getting the commission of 500 rupees just for a single product so why the same are being like provided some kind of excess commission is the company doing some kind of ethical business or not so that's again going to question your mind in that case so that's again an indicator for the same next thing purchases are actually made at a prices significantly above or below the market price you are aware that the renaults fine drip pen comes for rupees 5 on the market whenever you go to a normal store stationery store you can buy this renaults pen uh, 045 for rupees 5 i'm not sure whether the price is same in uh, nowadays or not but i'm just taking an example so uh, let's suppose it's for rupees 5 so the next time you go in, in that company that's a renault one so uh, they are actually purchasing uh, some of the goods from the market same kind of pen is being purchased at the price of rupees 10 how the, in the market that's being sold out at a price of rupees 5 then why the company is actually purchasing the same at 10 rupees you need to have that understanding so why the company is purchasing above or extremely below market price so what's the deal in that okay so that's that needs to be uh, that needs to question your mind in that case again the next thing will come in as unusual payments in cash uh, unusual uh, they are not pretty much common or recurring in the nature some unusual payments have been paid purchases are form in the form of some cashier checks payable to the bearer or transfers to the amount of some unknown bank accounts again that's the kind of transaction which indicates again to your questioning mind next thing comes in some unusual kind of payments are being made towards legal and retainership fees some unusual transactions with the companies being registered in tax havens why are these transactions being made with these companies again the questioning mind next thing comes in as a payment for some goods and services made other than to the country from which the goods are actually originating the goods were being made in korea and you are getting the same imported from china what's the point dude you're just paying them extra cost why is there some kind of connection okay you as auditor needs to check that next thing comes in as some kind of unauthorized transactions or improperly recorded transactions again that's the thing Uh, which needs to be highlighted some existence of some kind of information system which fails whether by design or extent to provide some kind of adequate audit trail or sufficient evidence and finally some kind of adverse media remark or comment you just opened up a tv and got to know okay ansal uh, mr ansal got uh, the kind of imprisonment for one year uh, are you guys like aware he just got an imp- uh, an imprisonment for uh, a year now for uh, the upar theater case which happened 20 years ago so our legal system my bad i'm still living in a country like india uh, just like amir khan and shahrukh khan as well so uh, no offense to them but uh, the result uh, uh, the verdict just came out and the ansal brother mr girish ansal got an imprisonment of a year now so uh, what's going to happen to the ansal group now so they have been like into some kind of adverse media uh, coverage so is there something which is going on in the company which has come into some kind of adverse media coming so you need to be aware of that too as an auditor i am not kind of like uh, camouflaging or any kind of like uh, showcasing or highlighting the image of uh, in a bad name for any of the company i am just taking up the examples which have been like coming in the recent news so no offense to anybody who has been involved or in relation to ansals so no offense to that but that was something which has come uh, just came into the news so you need to be aware as an auditor of all these instances indicators which are being considered for verifying the compliance with the legal laws and regulations c final may 2010 investigation by regulatory organizations payment for unspecified services loan to employees sales commission or agent fees which are appearing excessive to the normal market purchases at above or below market price unusual payment in cash unusual payment of legal and professional fees unusual transactions with companies registered in tax havens payments without proper exchange control documentation 
unauthorized transactions or improperly recorded transactions and finally adverse media comment i just got to know that you guys got a complete clarity perfect guys that should be the case so if in case the same question arises in your question paper don't forget to mention these points you can add any of the other these are these are just the illustrative ones this list is just not exhaustive you can fill as many as you can perfect guys i just got to know that you guys got the complete clarity as to how and what to be done with this particular essay that is essay 250 if in case the question comes in i do believe you got it perfect superb so before concluding an essential tip like as usual so uh, remember that while writing any of the case based question relating to essay 250 please do mention this line while you start presenting your answer to increase your chances of getting maximum marks in that case based question institute of chartered accountants of india expects its students to write professional and technical answers remember so essay 250 consideration of laws and regulations in an audit of financial statements requires the auditor to obtain sufficient and appropriate guys by sufficient i mean the quantum by appropriate i mean the quality so we need to have both the things quantum and quality together quantity and qu uh, quality both are important as far as obtainment of legal and audit evidences are concerned so it requires the auditor to obtain sufficient and appropriate audit evidence regarding the compliance with the provisions of those laws and regulations which are generally recognized to have an a direct impact on the determination of material amounts and disclosures in the financial statements including tax and the labor laws and after writing this aforementioned line you can proceed with your case based situation and then finally you can conclude it at the end So perfect guys uh i just got to know that you guys you guys got the complete clarity perfect superb so uh let's move and conclude our presentation with a dose of motivation and that is your mind is an extremely powerful thing when you fill it with positive thoughts your life will start to change i just don't got to know i didn't got to know uh the name of the uh person who has mentioned this quote so i kept it anonymous So you need to have uh, this thing very much clear and straight in your mind that if in case your mind is fulfilled with some kind of positive thoughts, then only you can achieve something uh, useful, feasible, and uh, positive in your life. So accordingly, uh, your life will be like able to start and feel the change in that case. So your mind is a very powerful thing. So you need to ensure that you are utilizing your mind in some positive actions, positive thoughts, negativity, pessimism. these are things for the coward and you are not coward you are courageous you are wicked or valiant so you need to have uh, your mind indulged in all the possible thoughts positive enough for you and your family your relatives your friends you need to have that kind of atmosphere around yourself so change the way you think fill your mind with all the positive thoughts and your life will start to change perfect guys i'll see you in the next presentation with another great kind of concept another great great kind of chapter thank you on behalf of the edupedia world keep interacting via questions queries in the youtube comment boxes we love to help you out stay connected that will help us in understanding your needs way better